having problems finding zoom controls and i'm jazz sequence on the internet uh i'm joined on this show this is a show a podcast a thing where people talk and you listen i guess uh by my pals uh gary who's a professional hayride operator uh and slowly rotating in a semicircle. um <laughs> and Allison, uh, who is a amateur coffee drinker, um, working towards semi-professional, uh, and also a professional wrestler. Um, and she is Allison Plus on the internet. That is Binary Gary on the internet. Uh, we are Binary Jazz, uh, a show where we don't know what we're talking about pretty much ever. <laughs> I've trained this my whole life. Except last week when Gary knew the thing because of Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> what a jerk. Mm -hmm. And sometimes knowing the things, though, is it's, it's a buoy, right? Like, because otherwise you'd get too downcast about it. And then you get a, <laughs> you get a victory and then you're like, yeah, we know things. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that episode, we kind of went through half the, half the show without even introducing the topic. So it, it was a fitting episode to uh that didn't work out well didn't it <laughs> we got lucky luck didn't have anything to do with it that's knowledge counts Stand keep, by. keep stroking our egos I'll, I'll... <laughs> go team you've got this our, our egos appreciate it <laughs> we, we need we need reinforcement Look, I'm looking how messy my backdrop is uh, all of a sudden. Anyway, sorry. Like, what's this? <laughs> anyway. Well, you don't see the half-built uh, sofa that's sitting behind me. Uh, it's half-built. I mean, it's it's built, but it's um, it's really really old, and I'm like sure. fixing it. Um, mm -hmm. It has these like old like canvas straps that are like. 50 years old and like stiff and horrible. So I'm trying to pull those out and replace them with something else. Mm -hmm. And I'm about halfway through. So it's yeah. with barbed wire. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because, because the point of the couch is not for it to be comfortable. It's, it's to maim your guests. <laughs> couch some, of couches, horror. some couches I've sat on feel like that when I visit people where I'm like, there's nothing about it that feels like I should be staying and having a cup of tea feels like I should be leaving immediately. We, so we've- And you're like, do you use this couch? Like, come on, seriously? We have a couch that we got a long time ago, uh, partially because the, the material is like this fake, like velvety velour type stuff. Um, and it's like the one material the cats won't scratch. Um, so, which is the reason why we, we got furniture in this thing, because we knew that it would be protected from the cats. So we really don't like this couch. Uh, it's very uncomfortable, and we've always been wanting to look for something else. And, you know, you go to Ikea, and they have those cool-looking couches, and you're like, oh, that looks cool. We should get in that couch from Ikea. We've been to enough Airbnbs, and we've actually sat on some of those couches in Ikea to know that they are the least comfortable things in the entire world. Um, so, yeah, no. That, I, 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 that's what I was envisioning when you were describing a, a couch that actually was um, not way. the opposite of welcoming, unwelcoming. <laughs> it's like a couch? Yeah. <laughs> you know, a, couch, a couch that makes you want to get up and say, okay, uh, I'm going to be taken off now. Good scene, yeah. <laughs> it's been what? great. What is well, that good at then? I mean, the spatulas and couches, no. Veggie meatballs, yes. Uh, shelves. Shelves. I mean, not not um, not like shelves, like like, I mean, shelves that are really just large collections of cubes. <laughs> we have many of those, and they're very good at them. Um, they're also good at these things. I've, I've got them back there. Uh, it's it's like a, well, it's a shelving system, but you put these little like plastic tubs in. You can get tubs of different sizes. Yeah. yeah, those are pretty good. We have lots of those. 
my my yeah. convertible desk is from ikea and i like it even though i had to like modify it because i kept exchanging it for one that didn't make a horrible noise when i cranked it up and down and had to third time i was like third time's the charm i'm sure the third one will be fine no forget it i will just sand does it make that sound in the store too though no probably <laughs> because it's gone up and down so many times in the store that the mechanism oh. doesn't need to be sanded i'm assuming um hmm. yeah my my standing desk oh it's like a squeal my... yeah my standing like... desk is made from uh, ikea parts yeah it's a it's a coffee table with one of the square boxy shelf things on top of it <laughs> everything's cubes or squares that's the beauty of ikea coffee tables <laughs> This weird coffee table that's like a bean shape, and then there's a smaller one that fits underneath it. Four legs and three. I don't know what it's. I mean, it's got a weird name. Obviously, I like weird, it. It's my coffee weird table. Being Swedish. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that that's a trofast, and mm. that the the thing with the square cube thing with the, and various different uh, orientations is a Calax because we have tons of those. Oh yeah. Those are the two things I know from IKEA. And the, the classic Billy bookcase. And the Billy, yeah, obviously the Billy. <laughs> Which is easy to remember. We have many Billies as well. I have no idea what any of my IKEA stuff is named. <laughs> Makes me, I feel like, I'm like, oh, I feel like a trip to IKEA. No. Actually, going to IKEA, oh, you don't really need to go, and the pressure that's, is on. That's awful. The pressure, yeah. You can just wander, mm -hmm. then you'll lose maybe 10 it's hours. Of yeah, life. we actually, so we were, there is a, an article I was reading and there's a video, I think that like Vox or Buzzfeed or somebody made um, that was talking about two Ikea uh, store designers about how they um, design the stores because they literally make it m the most maze-like as possible so that you have to walk through all this crazy shit before you actually get to the exit. Um, mm. So the, the way to, to hack Ikea is to go there, like do your research beforehand, like know what you're going to get. Um, and you, if you go to the website, you can get the actual, and you find your Ikea, you can get like the bin number and the shelf number and all this stuff. So you don't even have to go through the, the showroom. You can just go straight to the warehouse and get your thing, which is what we try to do. That's a good. Because yeah, you'll you'll definitely kill yeah. in a minimum of two hours. And just because I mean, you're stuck behind other people, basically. And and they also, I mean, the reason why they have food there is because they know that if you're gonna be there for a really long time, then you're gonna get hungry. So they put food there so that you can go get the food there as well, so that like you spend more time there and like, oh wait, there is that one thing on yeah, and then you Oh, I consider it a whole like a theme park experience. I want to be dumped. I want to be dumped into the gift shop where there's like washcloths and like plants that are already infected with mites and like. <laughs> <laughs> what? But their carts, like their cart situation, is terrible. Their uh, cart situation is awesome. It's the only cart in the world where you can do a little spin around on it. <laughs> you cannot ride the cart in the parking lot. Oh. Because of, well, you because could. I have, and it's dangerous. <laughs> I've spilled it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the, that I do. I do have to tell my kids not to ride those carts. Yeah, well, nobody told me. <laughs> <laughs> nobody was parenting Gary in that parking lot as he careened out of control. <laughs> I mean, forget crashing in other cars. I was worried about protecting like my own self. You know, as it went <laughs> sideways. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad. <laughs> Just, I just picture the sound effects of like, it's not even a yelp, it's so much as like a, yeah! <laughs> I mean, the best part is my, my children are watching me do this, right? So, well, great I, example. So I they're think, learning from your mistake. That's yeah. good. I hope so. I think it's a good lesson that parents aren't, you know, all-knowing. <laughs> <laughs> Not that anyone's kids are, I well, I don't know. I think kids are under that conception, like, just yeah. for a while. I don't know. I always felt like my dad knew everything and that I didn't know anything and I was really dumb. 
Um, I think that you just assume that parents know everything until they're, until you're about 13, and then you start to see the cracks or start to notice the cracks. Yeah. And you're like, oh, they don't have their act together. Yeah. Yeah. They're just trying. And like, then you have this like existential crisis about yeah. like life, the universe and everything. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, we're all just trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Everyone's really just human and everything is terrible. <laughs> and that's I the- love. According to us. I don't know. Let's find out. Like that's my favorite answer to a question. That's, that's because it means I can spend time on Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what did we do? So. Or Encyclopedia Britannica in my day and age. We had a mismatched encyclopedia. We had A through M from one year and then N through Z from the next year. <laughs> so there's probably a gap between yeah, so there's a gap between the two, I'm assuming. Like there's I don't some know. things How missing. Who knows? Just, yeah. <laughs> no one knows what they were. These are the gaps of knowledge that, that we bring to the table. Yeah, I guess I did have a encyclopedia. You're like, and on that note, our topic today is <laughs> My topics are all from that one missing clump. <laughs> <laughs> they all start with the letter M N. Yeah. <laughs> Pneumatic. <laughs> you know, it's just like you get really theme oriented all of a sudden. That's really all that I can think of that starts with an mn <laughs> I didn't want to point wait that. pneumatic yeah that's actually a pn isn't it i'm yes. wrong yeah. like well mine went all the way up to p and then, <laughs> then we got q to the end of the alphabet I, I mean we had that thing i don't know when when encyclopedias left my house i think i moved to college encyclopedias were still there oh, i just remember we didn't have one, but we'd have to go to the library to reference one. And then like if someone else had taken the one you oh. needed, you had to like change your whole topic and you're like, well, now I can't research <laughs> that. Like I, I have to choose a different <laughs> letter entirely. And figure I can't out. research octopi and we'd have to research snakes. <laughs> I know, you're like left with whatever's there. <laughs> yeah, I had a really library bad... library have like, a couple different encyclopedias? The library did, yeah, yeah. My I don't mean to make it sound quite so stark. I did, I did have a pretty great library. Because <laughs> my gym was always like, oh, you, you need to have like four sources. Well, the library was always good for two sources of encyclopedia, even though the article was probably identical, right? <laughs> or pretty close. So, but there were two them. sources. I looked at both of them and read them, and, you know, that was handled. <laughs> well, let's face it. Your articles were already, uh, it was always space. You always... <laughs> it was the S encyclopedia. Let's just call it what it is. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Like, I feel like I had to do a lot of, like, papers about people. Mm-hmm. Here's, here's a person that you need to write about. We so, had a, um, in like, seventh grade, I had a research assignment where everybody had to pick something from the song, the Billy Joel song, uh, We Didn't Start the Fire. <laughs> That's amazing. And so bizarre. You know, because you know, I mean, if you know that song, he's basically just name dropping everything that happened in the 20th century. So pick one thing, that's your thing. So yeah. I did my I did my uh my paper on Woodstock. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I'm gonna go listen to that song and be like, "What would Don't. I?" Have chosen? <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe for the purpose of like figuring out what you would chose, what, what you would have chosen. But yeah, it's not, it's not worth listening to. And we listen to that song so many times. Oh my god, that's a strong stance. Not worth listening to. Not worth listening. To. Unless you get a research paper about something that happened. Yeah. Meanwhile, your grade seven teacher was like their favorite song. Yes. On loop. Yes. Yes. She had, she was really cute. She, I mean, she's an older woman, but she had this beehive haircut that looked like, uh, like one of the member missing members of the B-52s. That's yeah, amazing. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. Wow. My, my kindergarten teacher had a huge beehive and I just remember being so fascinated by it as a little kid. And then also growing up and like revisiting and seeing her, like, in realizing her beehive like wasn't as large as I remembered it being and like then I'm being like maybe it's just deflating over the years and like kind of just having this like sad moment of like oh or like maybe I'm getting taller 
and since I'm taller, my perspective has changed, so the beehive is not as, as like magnificent yeah. as when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so today's topic? Oh. So this is a show where we have a topic, and Alice, that, Allison, I'll give you some time. Uh, this is a show where we have a topic that Allison gives to us, and Gary and I have not heard this topic and probably don't know anything about it, but we're still in, we are still trying to uh, talk about this, sub this subject as if they we didn't know something. Obligated to talk about this topic. Obligated, you know yes. Something. You might know. It's our contract with you, the listener. <laughs> contract. <laughs> Obliged contract. Uh, the, topic, topic. the topic this week is vernation. Can you use it? Uh, can you spell it? <laughs> the topic this week is vernation. V e r n a t i o n. Drat. That's how I thought it was spelled. So there's no help. Vernation. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, should start, I should really start looking up like the root of it and go real spelling bee with it. <laughs> so Verna, uh, as we all know, as we all know, was the old lady that would walk to and from the grocery store with that little cart and the umbrella sticking out in the back. <laughs> so Vernation would be the act of like transporting your groceries to and from or from the grocery store home um, by foot. Vernation, V E R N A T I O N. Okay, mm -hmm. Vernation. Vernation is uh, <laughs> a uh, lesser known uh, social media platform for, uh, <laughs> for developers who, uh, who particularly uh, adhere to Semver uh, semantic versioning. So it's ver nation. <laughs> Typically spelled capital V E R capital N A T I O N. You gotta get that camel case in there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ver nation, and the emphasis is on the ver. Ver nation. Ver nation. Ver nation. <laughs> I don't think nation is important. <laughs> I like the. I, I the like president the president of the United States would like to disagree with that because he's oh, a nationalist. God, he thinks the nation yeah. is most important. Dear listeners, you can't see my face, but know that it's it's not a pleasant one. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Are if, we? Are we, um, are we part of the liberal media? Can we be part of the liberal media? <laughs> I think as I'm as, definitely a liberal elite. <laughs> I think as self-instigated media, we can say we are whatever we want to be. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So fake news, right? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. We're the originals. We <laughs> <laughs> don't try to be real. <laughs> I wonder if Gary's version of Verna is a developer who would be part of Vernation. If Not she's the first one. If she's tech savvy enough. Not the first one. No. The second one with the bug fix, now she would be. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a bug fix. 2.5.3. Do you, so, do you, are you Semver? Do you, when you write stuff personally, do you, what, do you, do you version it, I guess, first off, or is it just master and then whatever branch I'm merging to master? Secondly, is it Semver or do you start out like I do where, this is version 0 0.1. And then eventually I'm like, oh, well, it needs a bug fix. So now it's 0 0.1.1 and now it's Semver. So the first version is never Semver and the next version starts Semver. That's how I roll. That's how I roll too, generally. Yeah. And part yeah, of that I mean, is- I don't do version control, no. I, I mean, <laughs> part I, of, it's hard part of that is just because, yeah. part of that is just because like the boilerplate that I use when I write new things has 0 0.1 as the default first version. So that's just <laughs> like, it's really like, it's not version one, it's version, it's not version 0 0.0.1. So what's your personal threshold for, for version one? Is there like a certain amount, like, like are there MVP features that you say, well now it's version one? 
Or you say uh, yes. version one is like, oh, it's stable enough. No, I usually, I usually shoot. I have for, a funny line. I, I usually shoot for something that I think could be usable for somebody who's not me without uh, an abundance of, of difficulty or complexity. I, I'm very close to that on version one. For me, it's version one when I decide that I'm willing to live with this thing and actually do updates to it. Otherwise, it's, I mean, it could be like 0 0.93.1. <laughs> I mean, version one means like, okay, this is a thing that I will do things with in the future. Until it's version one, I can throw it away mentally. Oh, that's interesting. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, version one, I'm like, well, it wasn't version one code, so. Oh, well. And then if someone, like, if you put it out there and someone approaches you, if it's at that point, then you're like, it's worth it enough for you to, like, fix the bug or explore whatever's going wrong or. Yeah, see, I, I, um, I got really over ambitious uh, at one point in time uh, in wanting to open source all the things. And, uh, and not that all my things aren't open source, but, like, um, I put stuff up on um, the WordPress plugin repository that were less than version one because I was trying to put stuff out there. Um, and there are a lot of things that I have out there that really don't need to be there that aren't, that are like proof of concept or like prototypes or like not really things that other people need or should be using particularly um, that were sort of my own personal experiment. The one thing that like off the top of my head, like I made a, um, I made a plugin for collect for your uh, collectible card game collections um, to put all the different cards from different things. And it was like, really just like, this would be a cool idea. I could put all my magic cards in here. People could put their Pokemon cards in there. You have to write all the stuff up, but then people started using it and they're like, well, I want to use this for, uh, for like selling stuff on a store. I'm like, dude, it literally has no front end. Like none. I didn't write it. <laughs> you could do whatever you want with it. It's open source, but there is nothing you can do with it. Yeah. And people, yeah, that's and see, that's the other thing is that people taking open source and wanting to run with it, but it's you're like, oh, but I'm I'm done over yeah. here. <laughs> and that's I think that I think that's a hard thing to realize, but I think it's super important. Like I've done as much as I I'm interested in doing with this. Like there's no open sourcing doesn't mean like the, doesn't mean that you're married to it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, open sourcing means that here's some stuff I wrote that someone might find useful. And, you know, if you can do it. Yeah. Know. That's why I put everything up on GitHub now and I haven't put moved much of that stuff, if any of it over to um, the plugin repository, because like everything is sort of like in the constant sort of state of, well, I'm still working on this and I'm still poking at it and I have, I'm not quite satisfied with it yet. And it's not at a point, I mean, even if it's, version one or version two it's still not at a point where like i think other people would care about it um and if they do care about it they can go to github mm -hmm. so my first um plugin that org repo i decided uh, after after the first wordcamp us in 2015 i decided like well like, this is probably where i'm gonna go with my career you know development like i could i could probably figure out a way to get a job in wordpress so then i like forced myself every month to get a new plugin in the plugin repo so i got a job in WordPress. yep wow yeah, that was dumb. <laughs> but it was also nice. I mean, but it was, a, it was a great, I mean, it was dumb, but it was a resume builder, right? And I mean, some of those plugins now I'm like, oh, please never. Like I, I thought the other day about one of them, like I should email them and ask them to remove this one, right? I have, I have just, one. Just, um, there used to be a service called protocol.by. Um, and the idea was that um, it was a, it was a, an external, it was a service that you went in and you put in like, what are the best um, means of communication to get in touch with you? Um, because not everybody like email is not necessarily the best thing. Like maybe it's Slack, maybe it's Twitter, maybe it's direct message, maybe it's text, whatever it is. And you put your different means like methods of communication into this thing and you rank them so that people can see you, I can get in touch with you this way first. And that's most responsive and this way and this, you know, like whatever. AOL and messenger. <laughs> and so, and so because it was sort of a third party service and there was a JavaScript, I had, a, I have a lot of plugins had probably still have, I mean, I do still have, have a lot of plugins were basically just a WordPress implementation of some JavaScript thing out there. So you don't have to like, you know, go out and embed this code in your theme. You just install a plugin, turn it on. And, and so like, I have this plugin for protocol.by, which is just literally just 
hitting this thing and that service doesn't exist anymore. So <laughs> of all the many things I have built that are completely useless now, that is probably the most useless because the thing, doesn't, the thing that it's pointing to doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. yeah. There for the like posterity of archives of like, mm -hmm. remember when we had to tell people how we wanted to be reached? Now we just don't want to be reached. <laughs> yeah, really. Now just don't talk to me. <laughs> Do you think there's a negative to leaving code like that out there? Um, like, does that code, so like I have some really bad plugins, like would it be better to not have them associated with me? I mean. Or just, or just like no one care. I think no one cares. I think no one cares. Yeah, no one's gonna like look at, yeah. yeah. You apply for a job and you say, give me some code samples. Like, yeah, don't look at these ones. <laughs> I think if people care that much, then there's larger issues happening. In, in the back sphere of people digging through your archives. <laughs> I mean, I, don't know, I guess there's something... a situation like if you were trying to get an understanding of, of a developer, you know, if you were hiring, I, I could see like looking at super old code to just confirm that there has been like growth, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. But I mean, in, in terms of like uh, applying for a job or something, they're not going to be digging through your old stuff. They're going to be looking at the things that are most frequently. If they go to their GitHub profile, it's going to be the things that you've featured or the things that you've most recently committed to, and that's the thing they're going to be looking at. They don't care about your old stuff. Because no one wants, no one like. I mean, ideally, they want to see where you're shining. If they want to see like where you're bad at things. I don't know. I just feel like it's a weird focus for an employer to want to take. Being like, we really want to see where. They can't polish the turd. Like, <laughs> so vernation <laughs> uh, is a type of uh, mold flower. Moldy flower. <laughs> Not a moldy flower. It is a, is a flower that is uh, that is somewhat related to the carnation. Yeah. It's an inside-out carnation. <laughs> well, I don't even know what that would be. <laughs> what do I? Are they are they scented or is it a non-scented floral mold? It, it's not a mold. <laughs> it's a flower. Uh, it does not have a scent. Does it come in a in a, a range of colors? No, that's the problem. That's the thing with vernations. They're only green or purple. Oh. Well, it's a range. It's a wow. small range, but it's a range. It's two. <laughs> okay, what, what makes a range a range? <laughs> Let's go down that rabbit hole. More than two. <laughs> More than two. At least two. You roboted. Oh, well, that's good, because that's something stupid anyway. <laughs> At least two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, um, uh, I don't know what I I don't know what I said. Yeah, it was probably two. <laughs> um, I was thinking about vernation as a mold. It's it's a unique type of mold that um, doesn't necessarily prefer a, a damp environment. Dryer is better. <laughs> a dry a dry mold. mold. I like I like the the idea of. A mold, of a mold that's really going against the grain of other molds. <laughs> it's black, obviously. What, uh, what, uh, what types of climates does the vernation grows its hair like over one eye? <laughs> <laughs> I understand my music, mom. What uh, types of climate does the uh, vernation mold uh, uh, appreciate? Arid. Arid. Desert climates. So it just grows on the desert. Yeah. Why yes. not? Sure. I can get behind that. <laughs> oh. We've, we've Arid reached our dumb desert hold. <laughs> we've, desert reached, hold. we've reached our 10 minute timer, so I guess that means we need to know what vernation actually is. <clears throat> vernation is. Uh, the formation of new leaves or front, like plant fronds. So like the arrangement of leaves in a bud. So like, oh. so circular, like cir circular vernation is like when a pot, like a fern 
like has a new little mm. I'm circling with my finger like that's useful for audio at all <laughs> but yeah new growth so there's circinate there's convolute there's a whole bunch of different types of vernation and it comes from vernal meaning spring that oh that does make sense and you were kind of edging onto it at the end there with your your various plant and botany knowledge <laughs> ridiculous mold you mean our fake plant plant and botany, botany knowledge <laughs> <laughs> yeah vernation usually in temperate regions have it. No. <laughs> oh well of course <laughs> Yeah, you know. <clears throat> um, I don't know if we have any user questions, or do we need to go to the Allison batch? Uh, we don't have any user questions. So, listeners, you can submit your questions uh, by going to the website binaryjazz.us. Scroll down to the bottom. There's a form there. You could click on contact and, and that's send on us a question. Yes, it's on the internet. Uh -huh. Binaryjazz.us. It's not just me saying us. It's binaryjazz.us. Do you need to log uh, on? No, you just need to t you just need to send us a question, or you could you could log into Twitter, which is a thing that you could log into, and you can send us a question that way at binary huh. yeah, as, or just converse with us in semi real time. Or you could join our Slack channel and ask us questions there. We do Slack, which is also linked on our. Website. So we don't have listener questions. Uh, so do you have questions prepared, or should we go to the archive? Let's go to the archive because I I feel like my questions. Let's go to the map. Well, I do I do have another quiz inkling, but it's not fully formed yet. So I'd rather Wait, like yeah we should we should let it bake. Yeah, I want to let it bake like, in the oven. Yeah, under the. Earth. And that's, there's no hints there. It has nothing to do with baked goods. Bacon? <laughs> Uh, what's the best birthday cake you ever ate? What a segue. <laughs> wow. I thought this would be a particularly good one for Gary. <laughs> I don't, Mostly. I don't know that I have one. I'll, I'll fill in while Gary is pondering. I don't know that I have a specific favorite birthday cake. I've never considered that. I have a I have a favorite type of cake or had a favorite type of cake, which is generally like um, like a white cake with raspberry filling. Ooh, that's nice. Any particular like frosting or icing preferences or? Um, the kind that's more uh, like powdered sugar based and less like crazy horrible frosting, like the thick fluffy kind that's just, I yeah. just, it grosses me out. Yeah. Um, and actually um, for our wedding, the cake that we had our caterers make what had like lemon it was a lemon cake with raspberry filling um and and like a, a cream sort of uh frosting which was awesome of course i can't eat it now because it's all dairy and gluten but you know yeah so i was like 23 or 24 um and rhonda made me a um, cookie cake Ooh. which it was i love cookies so it was a really thoughtful cake um, and then I also finally recall a carrot cake that I, we did for my grandmother yeah. a few years ago, right, right, not long before she passed, maybe one or two years before she died. Um, that was good. Now, when you Carrots. say cookie cake, do you mean a cake with crumbled up cookies inside, or do you mean like cookie, um, like layers? When it's like single layer cookie. Yeah. Like in a large gigantic. Okay. Yeah, with writing on it. Yeah, it's against cookie. Yeah. Is it like a chocolate chip cookie? Oh, yep. 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 Now, chocolate chip cookies, nuts or no nuts? What are, or do we like, like a chunky? Oh, man. I, I stand on cookies the way I do on coffee. Like, any way you want to give it to me. I <laughs> it. Okay. Um, I, I tend to be the same. In fact, my, my favorite cookie it, it has like peanuts and chocolate chips in it and is uh, like almond flour based, I believe. There's a- um, mm. I, I could talk about cookies for a long time. <laughs> like oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. Oatmeal raisin are great too. I know oatmeal raisin gets a bad rap, but that's still a solid cookie. Regardless of what you're Classic. Yeah. There's a uh, vegan gluten-free bakery 
in Toronto and they have amazing everything, not shockingly, um, but they have a cookie and they even have, it's like the chunkiest cookie ever has all the things and it even has like gluten-free pretzels in it, like with chocolate, with, like, oh, just it's amazing. I don't, it's worth every penny. <laughs> It's a lot of pennies. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did dessert. Did we do dessert? I think all our dessert, maybe not. I'm trying to recall at Work Camp Jack's last year if all our desserts were um, vegan gluten free or if like half were. It was, it was a big chunk of our budget though. It was almost as much as we spent on lunch. <laughs> but so good. So the stuff that keeps people nourished for the weekend or for the day. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. May as well spend money on the food. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have a, a really amazing meal than a t-shirt. I'll say it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I we had the t-shirt conversation not too long ago. As yeah. organizers. And I think we settled in like uh, all the t-shirts that everybody does, but. Yeah, when I went to WordCamp Denver, I was surprised that they did not do T-shirts. They um, they they gave out Nalgene bottles and and um, sweatbands. Yeah, sweat whoa sweatbands or sweatpants? Sweatbands. <laughs> I thought you said sweatpants. Sweat pants. I'm like, no. sweatpants, sweatbands. I was like, that's like a comfy, weird option. <laughs> and and so I and like comfy I was like, oh. underhanded. <laughs> <document."> <laughs> I was like, oh, you don't do you don't do T-shirts? She's like, no, um, because sizing. And always, yeah, sizing. So, do you have a large Nalgene bottle? <laughs> <laughs> now you have a plastic bottle. Yeah, and we don't typically use plastic bottles uh, because of plastic. So, uh, it's a storage container that my daughter uses now. Yeah. So, do you avoid plastic because you? Oh, crap. Um, do you avoid <laughs> plastic because you're worried about um, the production side of plastic, or you're worried about the leaching of plastic into the water? Uh. The health uh, implications in consuming uh, food from an object that may contain chemicals that would then go into my body and potentially poison me. So aren't Nalgene like <clears throat> supposed to be they're, BP, they're, they're BPA free, BPA but, free yeah. they're, but that doesn't mean that they're not everything free. I mean, plastic has chemicals. Regardless, and, and just because there hasn't been a study on the other effects of other chemicals that are that are used in the composition of a plastic water bottle doesn't mean that there's stuff isn't there. And you could just avoid all of that by just using metal water bottles, water bottles, or glass. We did glass water bottles for a while, but they're really heavy and they don't they don't uh, retain. Like the metal ones are good because they keep things cool. Hmm. I have some cold coffee. I like the idea of sweatbands. I find that novel. <laughs> yeah, it was. And the, the kids also have those. <laughs> <laughs> Similar to like a word camp scrunchie. Like I'm like, yeah. I, I would enjoy that to some extent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you two less so. Sorry. <laughs> less scrunchy people. Yeah, it's been a while. It's a little bit long. Maybe I'll let it grow out for now. Yeah, I don't know that I would make much use of a scrunchie. A nice bracelet? <laughs> Possibly. Slap bracelet. My daughter, would love, my daughter would steal that in a second. I'm going to go pop that into the uh, orgs jam. Let's see. Slap bracelets? You think about slap bracelets? <laughs> I did, uh, I did uh, soccer. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.